Welcome to the Kinkazoid Podcast, where you get some education on your form of stimulation. With your hosts, Royal, Chase, and Trey Proper. Buckle your seatbelts because it's going to be a wild ride. Let's get kinky. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Greetings and salutations to another wonderful episode of Kinkazoid. It's your boy, Trey Proper. We got a great show lined up for you. Ladies, if you will, introduce yourselves. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Royal. No tagline necessary. Just recognize she's a queen. What's going on, you guys? It's your girl, Chase C. Hayes. It doesn't matter how you say it, long as that flavor stays in your mouth. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and get right into things. And uh, damn, go away, go away, go away. Uh, let's get right into things with our Toy of the Week. Now, this one comes special ordered from our Discord. Actually, shout out to Lillian Desu. She posted a clip of a video of the, what do you call it? Uh, another podcast, another sex podcast. Um, they were called uh, Hard or Soft. Sorry, apologize about that. It's actually sit- staring at me in my notes right now. And one of the hosts of the show made a mention of how he goes on dates and he always wears something interesting to catch, to basically a conversation starter. So he, wear, he wears a particular necklace. Okay. And this necklace is uh, when a lady, of course, asks him about it and asks him to describe what he has on. He's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's actually, he turns it on and it's actually a vibrator. It's a vibrating wand. And it's very... Uh, it's called it's called the uh the vesper so i i was i was on my ears on that one i was like wait a minute okay that 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 works that that actually i like it so i don't know if he has pictures up yet but it's uh very clandestine you can't really tell what it is unless you know what it is Mm -hmm. um it's it's unisex so it's not something that's too effeminate or uh masculine and it used what you use it for what you needed to do if you know what i mean um so I'm definitely thinking about investing in one of these just to add it to my collection. It's only going for $69. And yeah, so what do you ladies think about that as a toy? I actually think it's kind of dope. Like, it's really, like, discreet. So mm-hmm. I like that. That's the word I was looking for, discreet. Yeah, it's really <laughs> discreet. And um, it's it's probably something that I would buy, honestly. I think after we, when we had the conversation, you know, off of the show... I, mm-hmm. I went to the lake because I was like, this this is something that I would consider getting, you know, and probably would use on date night or something like that. So, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's a yes for me. There you go. Stainless steel comes in three different colors, rose, gold, silver, and gold. Uh, Chase, what about you? Just got to make sure you have some wipes, um, <laughs> some sanitation wipes um, or good scent wipes. Some type of wipe got to be on hand because you can't be walking around smelling like putty cat. Um, all Act. day until you done, Act. you know, vibrated somebody's daughter, um, or somebody's son. somebody's daughter. Um, you can't just be walking around like bussy and putty cat. You feel what I'm saying? So you can't just have that around your neck. Uh, so just make sure you got some sanitary wipes, uh, and some smell good <laughs> wipes from your local uh, sex store and or uh, Walmart. And uh, yeah, other than that. I think this is a really great toy. You know, I always got a, I always got the blicky on hand. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Got it in the console of my car. Uh, so you always got to make sure you're ready whenever you can get ready. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm out here. I'm single, you know, so my rotation be real. So it's like, I got to get mine before I go attempt to let somebody's son get the, try to think, try to think they can get one out of me. You know, so on the way there, skirt, skirt, you know what I'm saying? So I think this necklace would be, would come in handy, you know? I got to ask. Who is not cleaning up after themselves these days? Who? It's not necessarily cleaning up after themselves. It's just after a certain amount of time. Like, it's like you use, like, okay, so we all have a scent, right? So after mm-hmm. a certain amount of time of using something, wearing something, having anything on yeah. us all, all the time, our scent attaches to it without right. question. Exactly. No matter how much you clean it, no matter how much you wash it, it just stays at like we all know especially women you have your grandmother's hand-me-downs for whatever reason you always get grandma's hand-me-downs and it still smells like her after 20 30 years of you having it okay so it's just it just it's ingrained in clothing material things so after a while i mean i understand the material might not be porous but i'm gonna be there right okay and now you're gonna walk around with me on you okay you might as well just get the erica badu candle in perfume okay and okay. cologne with her with her stuff on her you know what i'm saying Facts. okay I, I just only reason why i asked that is because this is the 
This is like the umpteenth time you've made mention of making sure somebody don't smell like that. Like, wait a minute. Who? I, I just, I hope there are not guys out there or women who will go out there with any type of toy and not have, not practice, you know, hi, have hygienic pra practices. But can't the same thing be said for men stuff. who are eating a cat and then they want to go around with the, you know, the smell on their lip and stuff like that? It's in, it's in your mustache. Oh, it's in your beard. Like, you, you know, it's there. So wouldn't the no. same thing... It doesn't matter. Like, it's uh -oh. just like when y'all be out here, like, you know, DJing somebody's pooty cat. Like, y'all wash your hands, but you still got the yeah. scent on you. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So it's just one of those things where <laughs> your gonna, it, it's it's hard to get. That's why we always say, like, you smell like sex. You could have yeah. went and washed your body. You could have did the cleanliness that you did, but you can still, still smell go like away. Still Yeah, the smell don't go it's away. There. It's the pheromones. That's just leaking through your pores of happiness that you just went through right. right like it's still gonna be there so no matter what you wash you're still gonna smell like it you know what i'm saying it's just making sure that this has been completely washed is a difference right some people just be, okay we oh, wipe it down a little soap a little water all right she's good no <laughs> get some bleach or something to put that thing on there like you know make sure it's clean make sure it's clean mm -hmm. facts 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 i just I just, I, I truly hope that is not something that's happening out and there I where hope people nobody are not. Touches it. And that's, that's, see, see, no, now, now we're getting somewhere. This is misleading. Okay. <laughs> because okay. whenever you, somebody has like a nice um, piece of jewelry on their uh, necklace or chest piece, right? Everybody, mm -hmm. some people are very touchy, especially if they're like cool with you. So they'll go like, oh, I love that's it. True. So that is this so is so true. pretty. Like whatever. Like, first of all, you're gonna be like, oh, this is so cute. Where'd you get this? Okay. Now, here's I'm the thing. walking around with my opinion is that you should only be wearing it when you about to be with the person that you want to wear it for. Or exactly. you know, like okay. now I'm walking around with the cheese touch. I don't want the cheese touch. I don't want to have unnecessary cheese touches. Nah, I don't uh, know. Fact, you should, you should of, only wear it when you're going to be with the person that you're trying to use it on with whatever. Yes, but part of hygienic practices is cleaning up before you do th do something and after. Um, but yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. If you have, if you just letting anybody rub their grubby ass fingers on it, then you got a bigger problem, and you end up with certain types of bigger problems. Um, but I, I'm not saying I'd be walking around like, say, hey, hey, let me, let me, let me, let me put this on you. No, that's hopefully nobody's doing that stupid I shit. But I, I, I'm planning on getting one of these. Uh, uh, yeah, that's definitely being added to the arsenal. I'm um, checking out the comments on YouTube. So, uh, Brittany Payne, I'm first to class tonight. There's what looks like it. Um, of course, me. <laughs> I want a gold, gold star for what? Uh, Genesize. Well, you got your gold star. Uh, Brittany Payne, I need this Mother's Day coming up. Rose, gold, and silver. Okay. Uh, just uh, why can't I go around smelling like cooch? Next, you're going to tell me to wash my face. That's why I made the face that I made because I saw that comment come, come across. The flavor saver. Somebody do, some, somebody do something with him, please. Please. The flavor <laughs> saver. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, we don't just go around. Like if, if we just finished fucking and we out somewhere where you can't get readily to a shower, it, it's going to be there. It's going to be there. I'm not going to lie. I've been a little, you know, infatuated somebody and i love their smell and it's been lingered on there but it's never more than a day um but i agree with you some things do stick to you all right so um go ahead and move on to the position of the week uh this week i've selected something to assist with a certain someone out there who has injured themselves and can't get around but on one leg this <laughs> i'm sorry you know i gotta take my shots uh unfortunately we got a we got a wounded warrior here miss yeah. royal she's she's hobbled me, if y'all are following me on tiktok then you know that um there was an instance where i thought that i still had mega knees and they turned out to be mildred so yeah right now my knee is sprained and i can't do much with it so mm -hmm. our uh wonderful trey proper here has found a position of the week that is for handy capable people like myself so Trey, there you go there you so i'm looking i'm looking out for you i'm looking out for you um <laughs> the position of the week is none other than the gimlet. The gimlet is a uh, uh, a sex position that is uh, pretty much made for deep penetration. The female, the female partner lays on her sofa or or couch, whatever you have, whatever type of 
horizontal surface you want to go on uh, lays on on the surface and you lay them on their side and they will basically curl their knees up to their chest if they can or they'll hold their legs in place while their buttocks and everything is exposed you don't have to crush them to your chest i know that may be an issue for some people but you would just hold them in place the gentleman kneels on one side and stands on the other the demonstration of course shows a couch and it actually makes for uh g-spot stimulation as well as deeper penetration so you don't have to do much. You can hold your knee in a particular position. Or if you have an on war, you can lay your leg on that. And he's actually straddling or standing in between or kneeling in between. So you can keep minimal movement down to that injured leg. Right. So as always, ladies, what do you think of the position? Uh, I think I can get with like a modified version of that. Because when a I say modified? I'm that's modified. Let me, let me tell you what. Okay, when I say when I say that the bending of my knee is is painful, it's painful right now, and it looks like though she's holding onto her legs, it looks like the knees are kind of bent, and that might be a problem for me. Oh, so I think YouTube I would probably do the arm bar thing where I could like lay my leg mm -hmm. out a little bit more, and then you know he could do the rest from there. Okay. But okay. Other than that, like you know. If my knee wasn't bothering me, I'd be down for this position, a hundred percent. It looks like an orange YouTube video. I definitely have seen before. I, I recognize that couch anywhere. Um, <laughs> the casting couch is that the casting couch? That's what it looks like. It is definitely the casting couch. Um, it's just not black. <laughs> yeah. Um, I eh, that's it. I'm like really envisioning myself in that position. I don't, I wouldn't be able to do it, but I definitely would have like, maybe if there was an ottoman like nearby, mm -hmm. I could definitely yeah. put my legs across the ottoman and like swivel them that way, or move them mm -hmm. back across that way. Or if it was like kind of like a day bed, maybe doing that, or even just on the bed in general. I mean, I wouldn't have the help of the backing of the, the, what is it called? The back of the sofa. Mm -hmm. Um but I, I, I mean, yeah, this, this position definitely could work. I think it would just be more if, especially if you're on a couch, maybe an ottoman or just letting your legs hang, or you would have to do the whole one leg up on the shoulder, I think would be a more probable mm -hmm. position just because there's still that stability, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, you the couch is what the, what the diagram is displaying, but it's not, it's not demanded to be there. Hell, it could be the backboard of your bed. Um, depending on how flexible he is, then it'll it'll be modified even further at that case. But you know, we've seen her off camera being on the couch mostly, so <laughs> I was like, "Hey, this one's this one's for you, homie. I got I got I got you. I got you. I'm looking out. I'm looking out." Yeah. So I um, <laughs> now now of course I have to ask, and I don't take offense to this. Um, and also ju judging by the comment that we see from Genocide Circus, I have a modified version of this that will work for Royal and should be BBW friendly. Do you guys think that this is BBW friendly? If you modify it, like if I said, you modify like, it Ottoman, definitely. Ottoman okay. With the ottoman, um, or footstool, mm -hmm. or maybe even with a strap. Like I, I, I feel like straps and ropes are very helpful when it comes to a feel, a full figured person, um, just because it gives and you don't have to hold. For mm -hmm. me personally, I think that makes sense. Like you know, like it's like you get to rest. Granted, it's, I mean, obviously it's going to cause something else, but you get to rest in some, in some fashion. So I would say if you wanted to do this in like the, uh, rigor, like I would do mm -hmm. like elbows to thighs kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. like have it like that. So that way the person's kind of, you know, push it, like you give them the lift that they need to feel comfortable enough, but you know, elbows to thighs or like elbows to knees, if they're able to do that. Um, I think that would be a great, like, you know, tie position or if it's just the strap, mm -hmm. like maybe just strap around or duct tape, not duct tape, but like that body, that body tape, like, you know, just a wrap around so that way they can just stay there and they don't have to worry about it. Okay. 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 All right. Um, I'm checking out the comments. Notes. Huh? I said doms everywhere are taking notes. Good job, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I like I like that call sign. Elbow to elbow, knees, elbow to thighs. Okay, let's go. Um, but or, I mean, and, knees and then handcuff wrist to ankles. Oh, checking out the comments on YouTube. Jimmy Gaff, uh, 
just bend me over the arm and call it a night. I overthink oh, yeah, this right here. Right. I got nothing. I the mean, yeah, arm. that's that's. Ooh. But if you can't put pressure on that knee, you know, you kind of have to. Right. Anyway. No, that's the point. So if you have obviously two ends always come on mm-hmm. the couch. So if you can't put much pressure on your knee, all you have to do is take that knee and lift it up on the sofa. You're putting all your weight on the other knee, on the other leg. Oh, so standing like, on one leg. So you're like this, basically. And you're leaning over the arm of the chair. So you're gripping the arm of the chair. So that's also taking a lot of the weight off of your lower half. So all you're using is your leg is to balance. And he's doing his thing your whole balance is in the upper part of your body your legs don't really have anything to do with it at that point because then after a while he's really getting into it he's gonna lift you up in the air and then there's there's nothing there's nothing that you gotta worry about (laughs) wheelbarrow all right okay Uh, (laughs) so um also we have an announcement that we want to make so we have uh we've been doing this for almost a year ladies it's yeah. getting coming coming close to that time. So because we have I'm sorry. It's coming close. Yeah. Um, because we have such a loyal audience, we want to give back to you guys for constantly showing up here week to week, um, liking, sharing, joining the Discord, keeping the conversations going, and putting up with me and my toxic my toxicity. Um, yeah. So we want to give back. A reward for that. Shoot. Anyway. <laughs> Don't make me break them out. Don't make me do it. I love you. Um so we want to do a one year anniversary giveaway. Um, we're we're workshopping it right now in the backstage, so we're not exactly sure how we're going to give it away or how we're going to do the raffle. Mm-hmm. Probably going to put everybody's names into a hat and pull it out. Not not work that part out yet, but it's coming. So we're going to do a seventy five dollar gift card to a sex shop or uh, uh, online. Maybe even we can hit up Irene the Passion Queen to see if they got gift cards. Get a little percentage off or whatever. Hey, hey whatever. yeah. <laughs> see what can happen. So right. um, definitely stay tuned for that. We will drop the full announcement in the Discord when it is ready to go, but it will be it'll be around the time of our 100, I mean, oof, yes, future speaking 100, but our one year anniversary episode. Right. All right. Okay, so let's get a little, let's get a little, let's get a little warmed up in the zone. Let's get a little hot in here, all right? So, um, First topic of the night, mainstream media. Okay, so I had the wonderful idea to talk about uh, sex scenes in movies. And I, as a young man, have seen a lot of movies. And I've seen a lot of different sex scenes in movies. And I was just sitting there thinking, damn, how many times have I been aroused by an actual, you know, fake sex in a movie? And of course, I wanted to bring that question to you guys here. I, I thought about it so much, I even extended the 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 concept to my other show members, Blurs and Whiskey, and I asked them what their favorite sex scene was. Well, the next question was, what sex scene in your past has aroused you? So we are primary, so we're going to go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> my choice, and don't judge me on this. Don't judge me on this. Don't fucking judge me on this. My choice for when I was a little bit younger and I was watching a movie and it got me thinking and feeling a certain type of way, soul food. Soul Food, the sex scene where Faith and what's her name's husband was in the room and they started talking and he picks her up, he puts her on the glass and he started getting in. Yes, it's adultery. Yes, it's cheating. No, it's not because it was cheating. It's just the whole motion. I wasn't supposed to be watching this movie at the age I was. <laughs> I really wasn't. I don't even know how old I was, but all I kept thinking at that point was like, I got to start putting bitches on walls. I need to get a penthouse. It was 90 something. It was something. But I definitely was having having some thoughts, if you know what I'm saying, in the theater. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, hey, how you doing, Boston Science? So, uh, yeah, that's my choice for the one that got me aroused when I was younger. Um, ladies, if you will, present us with your choices. She hate me. The movie oh. with Anthony Mackie. And, yes, uh, that's one of my favorite life. movies of all First time. Of all. Every when she second. walks into that room and he picks her up and it's like, yeah, let's and, go. And that was the what? That's the what? Now, don't get me wrong. Like every sex scene with Carrie Washington, that was y'all know me. You know I like both, so it's oh, just. Like, I, it's I don't know about different. all her sex scenes. Carrie Washington has not some. the one with not the. Mm, I say not the one with her and her girlfriend, but it was another one. Like when she first found out that she was into women and they were going at it. Oh, they were going that at one. it. Yeah. That Absolutely. one. That, that one was good, but the one between her and Anthony Mackie, that was my favorite scene, and mm-hmm. that was. It got me a little in the paper little bothered because you know it was just I wonder like, what happened to Fatima. I haven't seen her in movies in a while. Mm-hmm. 
but I know it was like, it was really raw. It was passionate, you know, all of that mm -hmm. animosity that was pent up between them. Yes. And all yeah. came out in that scene. Yes. It was everything. Mm -hmm. It was everything. <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jay's. Um, <laughs> It is. I had. I had a difficult. Decision. We're doing the one where we're younger, right? Not like our favorite run, right? No, our favorite one. Our favorite one right now. Okay. Um, my favorite one <laughs> is from the movie After Sex with uh, Mila Kunis and Zoe Sel Saldana. Saldana. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Zoe Saldana is like. I think she's bisexual. She's just lesbian. Um, in the movie, and um. You know, they're sitting in a library, this one particular scene that everybody's all hot and heavy for. And Mila Kunis asked her, like, you know, what does pussy taste like? And she's like, do you really want to know? And she's like, I want to know what I taste like. So she went down there with her hand in the library and gave that girl the business. And she tasted it and she said, you taste sweet. I was like, holy shit. Like, it didn't show nothing, but it was just the, it's just knowing. You know what I'm saying? It's just knowing right. that you have to be quiet in this library like there's no noise it's just like whatever and that smooth little cute line at the end yeah she was hot she was pretty mm. hot okay. okay what was the name of this movie after sex okay see she see your camera low so you can't see her pen with her pen be going because she be taking those two you gonna watch it <laughs> that's cool that's cool let's hit go to pen yeah thank you thank you yeah watching. stop stop trying to be all innocent we knows you's a freak we know you's a person i'm just playing I'm just joking. I'm we just, don't know. That's okay. I ain't look. I ain't mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you guys in the comments, definitely feel free to drop some of your favorites while that goes on. Um, actually, let, since I mentioned the comments, let's go over the comments here. Uh, let's see. Genocide Circus. Let me go over at that. Uh, oh, damn. I wasn't supposed to, but you just visualized that. Jamaica Dan. Oh, Genocide Circus. <laughs> um, boss Designs. What's up, boss? What's going on? Hey, boss. Hey, hey. Uh, she's loving the new hair, Chase. Yeah, she looking good. She got her, she got her Beyonce going on. All right. Um, the crazy one. You know, I was talking to someone about this the other day. Why is it in sex scenes women always have perfect breasts? This <laughs> shit is so unrealistic. But I don't have a favorite sex scene. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Um, yeah, don't know what to tell you. And just uh, circus. The modification is sex position 476, but allows her to fully lie down on her sides. You can take the other leg and bend it at, at, a, at a sitting position um, in front of you. This allows you full access to the rest of her for play. Okay. Good notes. Good notes. All right. So I did make mention that the cast of Blurs and Whiskey, I, I talked to them in behind the scenes. And of course, this is, this is very, it's comedic to me. Um, I'm going to go in order of the show. Big Herb, Weekend Herb, fan of the show, friend of the show. He says, Monsters Ball. With Holly Berry and Billy Bob Thornton was yeah, the scene. I feel good. You <laughs> make me feel good. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned that. Uh, that that was big, but but I just I, I, the whole movie. The last thing I'm thinking about when I'm watching that movie is arousal. Okay, because <laughs> it's like she just lost her son in a horrific way. Billy Bob is a known racist. And you, uh, like, I, I couldn't get into it. All right, going down the list. Uh, Mr. Patty Cam himself went with basic instinct. I'm assuming he didn't go into detail because he was actually working on something at the moment when he told me, but mm -hmm. I'm assuming that he's talking about the scene before she stabs the guy with the ice pick and kills him. But she is in full-on demon mode, and she's riding him to the baseline. I remember that scene when I was younger. I wasn't supposed to be watching it. Shout out to my granddad, rest in peace. But he let me watch that movie, and it was a similar I feel funny type situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a very interesting scene. Boss designs on YouTube. And Big Chuck, what's up, Chuck? Whatever scene I have consent to shoot. Really, really, Chuck? Pick, <laughs> pick a scene, drop it in the comments. All right, moving on down the list. We've got uh, Morita. So, oh, oh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta mention this to you guys. So, I'm gonna have to start watching Bridgerton because... Oh, Rich. She, she just, I love, I love English television. I have quite an effective English accent when I want to. However, she said Bridgerton episode six, season one. Yes. They are fucking oh, all yes. over the all castle. Over yes. the place. Everywhere. everywhere. Before we be, before Inside, we started the outside, show. Everywhere. Everywhere. 
I just I gotta I gotta watch the show now. I didn't know. I thought it was all ritzy and they're just singing and oh no, you know, fucking diddy. I ain't know. I ain't know. I ain't know. So now I'm gonna watch me some Bridgerton. All right. So um yeah, that was her pick. <laughs> and um moving on down the list, of course, Rick is Rick. Um, I'm almost afraid. Like, what was you Rick should be. pick? <laughs> Jason's lyric. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I saw that somewhere else too. Somebody said that that sex scene was so, they had to cut it back so much um, because they it was really headed fucking. to an NC-17. Because they was really fucking. Were they yeah. really fucking? What? I was fucking with you. I don't know. I but that was his choice. I don't think they and, was fucking. No, but they had to oh. cut the scene down though because it was headed to an NC-17 right and they wouldn't have been able to release it. Yeah. I don't yes. think they were fucking. Ah. Uh. I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. Monsters Ball. Halle Berry was really fucking that man. I don't care what nobody tell me. Yeah, she. Now nah, she was. They was doing. It. They was fucking. They was doing it. They was doing it. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way they were not fucking. And it's a whole lot of not fucking going on in most movies, but not that one. Nah. Um. And honorable mention to the producer over there, uh, off camera guy. He says Omar Epps in Deja. I don't know what that from, was. Um. I, from um. God. What movie was that? Omar Epps and Deja. It was uh, the girl's name. The character name was Deja, but it was Tyra Banks. Um, the um, one where you remember? I don't know. I can't. I cannot think of the name of the movie, but it was the the guy. Um, damn, why can't I think? It was Ice Cube in it, and um, basically she got killed at the end. I, I can't. Oh well, thanks for spoiling it. If nobody's seen it before. <laughs> Oh it's God. probably a very old movie. It's, it's tired it's of it. Such an old movie. It's such an old movie, and I'm, I can't think of the name of it, and I'm going to have to Google it now. Hey, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Herb said, don't fucking judge me. <laughs> Nigga Monsters Ball, what the fuck is the matter with you? Anyway, uh, let's see, uh, Boss of Science, that was a very interesting scene. Genocide Circus, no, I just remembered that scene from Monsters Ball two days ago, and now it's back. <laughs> Blame her. Ooh. That's the mail truck. Ooh. Blame her. Jamaica oh. says. Jamaica says poetic justice in the back of the mail truck. Is that American history? It probably is American history. Sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. And um. Oh, I think it was. I yeah. American history X. Because they were both in there, right? That, that no. Nah, that was um. That was what was that boy's name? No, no, no. Edward no. Norton or Ed Norton or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm confused. Sorry, I misspoke. Yeah. And um, Jamaica said po uh, poetic justice back in the old Boston science. Uh, they were getting it in, yes. And yes, she were. says American history. Um, yeah, that that poetic that the song, all that. It's just yeah. And then she in she the unties the brain. Ooh, that you know. Do I have it on my playlist? I need to add it to my playlist. I forgot. All right, cool. Uh, um, we are learning. Higher learning. Yes. I might have had to Google this in the show, but higher I, learning, I higher learning. Minute. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And um, so um, what I wanted, I did want to ask. In addition to this, what what was the first sex scene you can remember? Not necessarily one that aroused you, but what was the first one that you can subject to memory? And I'll go first. The first one I can remember as a child, unfortunately, and we didn't know what was happening. We didn't know what was going on. It was none other than. Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it probably has, oh, no. <laughs> it probably has kind of steered my orientation to this day. And the scene in particular that I'm talking about is when Dracula turns into a half man, half werewolf, and he go, he lures Mina out into the crypt. And when they come around that corner of that stone, and he's got her in a missionary position, he just growling and haunching over. Her. Yeah, yeah. To this day, it's still to this day, it's a little, it's a little. We need to go little, back yeah. and watch the movie now. I don't remember. It was a lot. Movie. It was a lot. I know it's weird. I, I, I like I like growling. So yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, what's the, and you guys in the comments as well. What's the first sex scene you can remember? Mine is coincidentally another movie with Keanu Reeves in it. Um, it's what and I was so young. Are you about and I to say what I'm talking about? Are you about to say the damn Devil's Advocate? No, but that's a good oh, one. I was about to say that's a good one. That was a good one. Um. But the first one that I can remember was from the fucking Parenthood. And the movie is so old. That's how young I was when I first saw it. I, I want to say mm -hmm. I was probably like five or six, maybe seven. Okay. And all I remember is the line 
we can record our love. And he had like a Polaroid while they were in the middle of doing it. And it was a Keanu Reeves line. That is the first, the first sex scene mm. I ever remember. Okay. And that also tells you how old I am. But, you know, anyway, moving on. You still, you still searching for one over there? I see the eyes rolling. I see him rolling. I don't <laughs> remember, like, really? at all. I don't, there's, I literally have no memory of, like, the first time that I was visually in a room that I, like, had to cover my eyes for. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. be, it was good movies, obviously, but I just, you know, I know I was watching not the most appropriate movies as a young child, but it wasn't like so bad. It was just like, you know, those heavy and hot scenes that they didn't want to see you like looking at two people making out in a bed, kind of giving an insinuation of like what it was happening. Yeah. Um, but like, I, okay. I'll tell you this. The first thing I remember having not the permission to really watch <laughs> was South Park. So there was something in South Park, obviously, happening that I couldn't watch it, um, besides the cussing and stuff or whatever. The movie? No. Do no. you know how old I am? The movie's, like, just came out a few years ago. I don't mm. know. No, no, the movie is... The, the, movie. the first movie... No, no, no. They only have one movie. That's movie South like Park? 20 years old, yeah. ain't it? It gotta be 20 That's years old. old. Yeah. Shut your fucking face, Uncle Faka. That's an yeah, old movie. I'm 29. <laughs> So that's why I'm saying, like, I I I remember the movie. It's just like South Park in itself. Um, yeah, that's the only that's the first thing that comes to my mind because I was still living in Boston itself when, like, you know. So that's the first thing that I have to memory of my mother being like, "Can I turn away from that?" Oh no, Lord, baby, don't look it at that. It was like something. It was something <laughs> in South Park that obviously they had it on. They was watching it, but it was something particular that I couldn't look at. And I couldn't remember what it was, but so that's my first don't look so but i can't remember like what movie was my first sex scene if that makes sense okay all right so checking out the comments um let's see going back to youtube uh american is blah 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 the pool scene in showgirls okay let's see nicholas cage in bad lieutenant it wasn't sexy it was just the way it went down was nuts i i don't think i ever seen that oh uh, that one i don't think i i don't think i've seen it um her Bridges, Higher Learning, Higher Learning is the movie. Okay, we got that. Uh, a few of the scenes from the, from Short Bus. Nay Boogie says the color purple. The color purple? Definitely not a sexy movie. There are some sex scenes. You know oh, what? Wait, that would be the first a, thing I remember. Oh, God. First? I think these are the first things they remember. Okay, I was about to say, I don't think this is their favorite. Holy I think this is the first. Okay. No, no, no. Right. This is the first. So, um, that, But I'm just, it just hit me like I did see that. And I did get the Lord Jesus, baby, don't look. I got that too. Uh, for the first two scenes, and it was like uh, the boy didn't see enough titties as it is. Just let him watch the damn movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, neighbor, you what's going on? Uh, the one scene in Kids, ill. Oh, Kids! I forget Rosario Dawson is in that. She's oh, very young in that. Amazing. It was. Oh my God, was Kids! So I forgot all about Kids. That was a that was a horrible movie. It was. Um, the, the crazy one. The first one I can remember wasn't was watching Red Shoe Diaries. Wow. Watching shit I have no business watching. Oh wow. Red Shoe uh, Diaries and Real Sex. Those were the two that I used to watch. Yes, yeah. Real Sex was the shit. That that yeah, that definitely steered my orientations too. Um, hey, what's up, Irene? Irene, uh, the the Passion hey, Queen. Irene. We mentioned you earlier, so you're gonna go back and watch the show again. So keep, make sure you <laughs> like make a like, drop a like. Um, what's popping, good people? I uh boss designs. I remember that scene from that movie, sure, yes. And um maybe I remember that. Uh Cam, yeah, I already called yours out, Cam. Basic instinct. I think you were talking about when she was riding him before she stabbed him with the ice pick, but spoiler alert for a 25-year-old movie. Uh Jamika Royal, I remember the pa the parenthood too. In Parenthood, when Steve Martin's wife wanted to help him relax and tried to give him head while he was driving, they ended up crashing. Mm -hmm. What? A feature word, Jungle Fever. Okay. Oh, Just wow. Like yeah. <laughs> the rocking chair scene in the movie Lolita. Also, ew. Another honorable mention. I'm, I'm live. What's up? Oh, okay. you know what? I think my yeah, first movie that had any indication of sex was Ease Bayou. Yeah. 
I think that was my um, first movie of any indication of sex was Ease Bayou. Okay. Obviously, it wasn't good um, because it was the scene where Samuel Jackson was drunk in the family room and Megan Good. Ooh. Yeah. And Megan Good came in there thinking that sitting on her father's lap a certain way or something was going to keep the him home or mm-hmm. something like that. Granted, nothing sexual happened, but um it's just the mere fact yeah, he that he pushed her off. She yeah, he pushed her off because he came too. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that she had to think like this is what's gonna keep my father home, type zone, whatever. But that was like my first like, well, this is inappropriate. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, yeah. like mental note, you know. Oof. Oof. Just uh anime ninja scroll. Really? Hub deucer. Anime ninja scroll. Get dude, what? you talking about the rock monster when he was up. Uh, you know what? I'm not even gonna go into it. Uh Lillian Desu, what's up? Mentioned you earlier, talked about a toy that you actually dropped in the Discord. Um, she said, What are we up to? We're talking about sex scenes that we were the earliest sex scene we can remember. Um hashtag camism, uh, Mr. Petty himself. Golden uh, the golden eye scene, uh for me also. I hear a I bit of an echo. I don't remember the scene from Golden Eye either. That was uh yeah. Or Wicked City? Oh w- no, Wicked City with the with the with the tarantula lady and she had the oh, oh. Google Wicked City. Her, what the hell are you watching? Anime. <laughs> Anime ain't for kids. I'll say that much. Vampire Hunter D, good one. Good okay. one. Good one. All right. Um, can you guys remember any? Oh, um, damn it. What was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? Shit, I forgot. I forgot. Totally forgot. Can you guys remember any other ones that come to mind? Any strange, obscure, or early, early heard on? It was probably Ninja Scroll for me too, Lily Desi. Wow, wow. You watched it too. Ninja Scroll was, yeah. The dude, yeah, it's just Google some old anime and it's probably gonna take you down a hentai hentai rabbit hole, but it'll be fun. You might be scarred. But you're an adult now if you're watching this channel. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so I'm already working through trauma. I don't think I want to add anything to it. It's, it's just, just a little anime trauma. It's high. Right. Right. Circus. If you're ta- if you're talking, that's inappropriate. Then the movie version, I know where the cage bird sings. I don't I don't know. I've Ooh. never seen that one. Ooh. What? Isn't that the Halle Berry movie? Sing. Was that the Halle Berry movie? Mm. I don't remember. Legend of Overfiend. I'm gonna have to go back Overfiend. and Google all yeah, these see, movies. And we're not gonna get into an anime knowledge dick measuring contest right now. Okay, so moving on, Miss Royal. I think this was your topic that you want to present. Ninja Scroll was pretty awful with its stuff. Got, got you. All right, enough of the anime. <laughs> Talk about it in Discord after after care. Uh, also, somebody dropped the Discord. I think you're talking about this is not my topic. It's but... oh, it's not. Okay, mm-hmm. Chase. Sorry. <laughs> Are we talking the the next topic? Introduce it. Introduce it. Okay, so I I, I'm going to do my best. (laughs) All right. So the (laughs) next topic is talking about. That's all. I mean, she can see it from there. Got you. Uh, The next topic we're going to be talking about tonight is falling in love with coping mechanisms. Falling in love with coping mechanisms. Uh, Yeah, that's all I got because I don't really know what the hell. All right. So (laughs) if you guys off um, our mainstream thing. Yeah, you guys know I'm like the pop culture part of the show. I watch all these shows and all that stuff and all these podcasts to get these things from. So if um you guys, if anybody watches um uh, This Is Us or anything, um, and you've watched the most recent episode, um, which is This Is Kate, you know, because it goes through the triplets or whatever, fast forwarding. Um, and I'm not gonna give a backstory to it, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. Basically, um, her this woman and her husband get into a a match with each other they basically get in an argument because he lied about saying that he can't move back home to work from home because you know he doesn't have a job and she finds out that the boss actually offered him a job to go back home and work and she he didn't tell her about it blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. the point of it is is that these this couple met at a fat AA meeting basically and she told him like I don't want to date anybody who's fat I don't want to date anybody who wants to stay fat and he's like okay anyway they ended up being together getting married any which way all right um and he lost a lot of weight and in him losing weight he secretly started working out behind her back 
because he didn't want to make her feel bad because she's the one who really, really, really wanted to lose the weight. Uh, but he had suffered a heart attack um, within like mm. the first year, year and a half of them being together. So he secretly started working out behind her back and he slimmed down a lot, like okay. a lot slimmed down. Right. So um, anyways, so so with that, she basically had imagined for that weekend because they have two kids. One of the, the oldest kid is um is blind. And so they have a lot of stress. And so he put together a whole weekend in San Francisco. They're from L.A. for her to do stuff. She's like, I just want to chill with you, whatever. She dreamed of her old husband the whole entire time, the whole entire time. The big, huge, froppy like oh the not, old like, version of him the old version, version of him that's the old version, version of him she dreamed about she imagined him and was talking to him the entire time she's with her husband she's talking to her so dude old had husband. to wear a fat suit in that jump huh <laughs> he had to wear like a fat suit to pretend like he used to be yeah well he he originally for the character originally was wearing a fat suit a fat suit a fat suit fat a suit, fat <laughs> suit. <laughs> okay a fat suit um for the show he was bigger though but he did lose weight naturally in the show um but he did wear it whatever so he had to put on his old get up basically okay um and it was the big the typical fat dude like you know okay. he looks sloppy hey, but hey, he hey. uses his jokes we loved over as, here like, we loved like over or here. a bigger or just a bigger person thing like you know they use their jokes uh they make fun of themselves um mm -hmm. to put up blockers and walls and self-deprecation you know, and they're out loud and their, their personality the matches their size and you're just the good old guy that you keep around because they're just so good right right you're starting and, to hit a little close to home right now uh-huh yeah so anyways <laughs> so um in that she was like i miss him i miss the one who was always here making me laugh enjoying my presence not making me feel like i'm smaller than him like i miss that guy so in the midst of getting into this argument, she says to him, this whole entire weekend, I've been thinking about the old you. Like, he's been here. So, of course, he gets mad. He goes, oh, would old Toby like to show out now? Would old Toby like to come around? Like, you know, and he's like, you literally, he was like, do you know who that guy was? That was a guy who was depressed, was on mm -hmm. and off his medications, because he, mm -hmm. he deals with depression. Um who hated himself, who hated his body, who hated his personality. He was in the crap of his life. And he goes, there was only two things that was going to happen. I was either going to find a bridge and mm -hmm. I don't need to finish it. Or I was going to have a heart attack. Oh yeah, that part, I did it and almost died. So mm -hmm. I decided I wanted to live. So I lost the weight and I became a more lovable guy outside of my weight. And he said, Kate, you fell in love with a coping mechanism. And that to me was like really, really deep because I don't think we ever realized, sorry, I forgot, it took me too long to get to this point, guys. But I feel like we don't think about that. Like when it get, comes to being with a partner, what is it that we fell in love with this person that might be different now that we're envisioning the old version of them? We're not even thinking about another man or another woman. We're thinking about the old them, not realizing we fell in love with a broken person. And mm -hmm. within the time of us being together, this person's be kind of became whole. And now you kind of almost have to learn this person over again. So I was, you know, asking the class and every, you know, and you guys, is there a coping mechanism that you have or have developed um, over time, years, whatever, that when someone says, oh my goodness, I love that you, or I love this about you, you kind of go, oh Yeah. But because you know in the back of your head, that's not really you. That's something that you do because it helps you protect yourself or it helps you get through. Hmm. Um, I can tell you one off the right off the top of my head because I'm going through it right now. I am the type of person that, that I take care of everybody. I take care of, you know, whatever needs to be done. Like I'm a person that gets it done. I don't wait on anybody. I don't like to feel like I'm burdening anybody or anything like that. And I just want to make sure everybody's happy. I take care of everybody and everything else to my detriment. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I say that's the coping mechanism is because I just want to feel useful. Mm. I mean, like I was the type of person where like, and I'll say it up when I was, a, you know, younger as a kid or whatever, but I was just the type of person where like, 
I would be made to feel like I'm in the way or, you know, I'm not helping enough or I'm not doing enough. I'm not enough, that type of thing. So I just made sure that I was. Hmm. And so now, you know, it's just, I do that to my detriment. It's something I'm learning to work my way out of, but imagine being that type of person and then being confined to your couch. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, with that bum knee, sis. Um, I see. I see. But you have help. You got all them little hands. I know. know, This will help out. I have help, but it's I don't like asking for it. We know. We we're well aware. (laughs) We we are well aware. (laughs) Um, That's one of my coping mechanisms. Me just being active and being helpful. Um, for me, I think that my biggest coping coping mechanism coping mechanism is uh i deflect i deflect i i joke i'm usually the jovial i'm that's why i say this kind of hitting home because you're kind of talking about me over there like mm-hmm. hold up wait the, damn but they they got cameras over this motherfucker what the hell mm-hmm. um because i've definitely been in that place i'm i'm not as uh i'm working on it <laughs> it's a work in progress but i'm not as i used to be i used to be very self-deprecating i would deflect i would make sure that i was the butt of the joke um, mm-hmm. I didn't have confidence and I was comfortable there. I was comfortable being that person and, you know, just, hey, let's make jokes about Trey. And to an extent, I still do it. It's still something. It's not something you can get over easily. But as far as someone being in love with that portion of me, no, I ain't got that yet. Um, so that's the only side of that equation I don't have. And I don't think I've ever been in love with a coping with a coping mechanism, whereas mm-hmm. somebody well, unless somebody was addicted to sex, to be honest. And I was in love with their libido at that time. Mm -hmm. And that was the dynamic of our relationship. Then I could see myself being in love with someone and and not necessarily not proper love, but (laughs) proper love, wink, wink. Um, Not that. (laughs) I ain't done it in weeks. Leave me alone. (laughs) Um, Not that, but actual lust where I, I lusted after that person. And I had to figure out. I had to learn how to love, how, what is my definition of that? What it is, what actually falls into it. So I've, I've never personally experienced it. What about you, Chase? Um, I think that for me, my coping mechanism is the thing that everybody actually really loves about me is my optimism and mm-hmm. my, my, my joking, my laughter, my comedy um to fair to say and only because it's me masking um essentially Mm -hmm. uh where on a if you talk to me like if you actually talk to me on an almost everyday basis you know that i'm not as i would say like i'm not as cartoon or animated there you go i'm not as animated as I am in an online presence or if a, to a person that I talk to every once in a while. I do give animation, obviously, from talking. Like, you know, I'll zoom in on a like on duo call because I'm like, I'm not understanding what you're saying. But when it comes to regular everyday conversation, I'm very quiet. I'm very to myself. I'm mellow. I don't really give that energy. Um but I believe because people love that about me and like that about me. And I have, and it, it's been done in my face where if I'm this, if I'm your joster, is it Joyce, joster? joster? Is that the joyster? Joster, joster, nope. joster, 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 whatever. Joster, yeah. Word. Yeah, joster. Um, joster. If, yeah, jester, 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 is it jester? jester. Yeah. It's jester. 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 Yeah. jester. Your mama. Anyway, so if I'm the jester or whatever, right? <laughs> and I'm like, and like, you know, everyone's like, woo, 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 woo. And then as soon as I'm just like, okay, like my social meter has, excuse me, thank you. My social meter has like went down. And I'm just, it's like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong? Like, where are you? Like, come on, let's, come on, let's dance, let's do it. It's like, no, nah, bitch, I'm chilling. Like, right. you know, mm-hmm. whatever. So I think that would be a fear of mine is like the person mm-hmm. who, I mean, obviously they would have to be um, a person that gets to know me to know that's not like me 85% of the time. 
Um, but I think in first introductions, you always want to put on a front. I'm sorry, y'all. No one's ever a hundred percent real themselves when they start talking to a person. Everyone yeah. puts on a front. Everyone yes. puts on a facade. Yeah, everyone puts on a facade. I don't care if you say I'm the realest and get breathing in the room. We'll stop. Listen, shut up. You're not breathing either. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's everyone puts on a facade because you don't want to show those quote unquote imperfections when you first start talking to a person. Uh, even if a, the person doesn't mind it, you don't want to, you know, show and show it into them. So I think that even when it comes to friendships and everything like that, I can tell who is a person who actually knows me and who just knows the outside, mask. you know, mm -hmm. mask of me. Uh, so that is definitely my cope of a minute. Like other people say that I, I what is it? I self-sabotage a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. that way it's basically, I'm going to get, I'm going to get myself before you get me. And I do, mm -hmm. I do that. I won't lie and say that I don't, but I wouldn't say that's a coping mechanism. Cause if you, if you love the fact that I make fun of myself, then I don't, I don't know how to take that, <laughs> but, right. but, um, but yeah, I think me just being this outwardly loud and I hate saying loud, but just loud character um, I think a person would love, want to be a part of me more than anything. Like, you know, like I'm sure like train or like people go, oh my goodness, I love you. I would love to be like friends with you in real life or like hang out with you in real life or whatever we have you like. But Chase, online. we are real friends. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, you know, um, and say I would love to do this in real life, whatever. I tell them. Bro, you do not want to be friends with me. Like, I'm telling you right now, like, what you think you're getting is not what I am. And you're going to be disappointed. And I'd rather you just stay in your corner. <laughs> because this, you're not going to get the real me. And then, because when you do, you're going to be like, well, what a bitch. And is. <laughs> like, like, and is. But, He's not. yeah. So she's that's why she's I a sweetheart. Wanted, she's that's a why sweetheart. I kind of wanted to. Um, I am. No, I really am. I really am nice. It's just, you know, some people just aren't used to my. I mean dark humor but everybody everybody is going you everybody has a limit everybody has that point where you cross someone and you find out that other side everybody has two faces everybody has a mask so i, I don't think i don't think i've never been on your bad side in reality as far as i know unless you've been really wearing two masks Let me tell you, <laughs> which is sometimes your ass open. i'm gonna tell you that right now um who you who you, you? me Owl. you yes Control, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need a damn whooping. Okay. Uh, Who's gonna whoop me? Real quick, Genocide Circus says if it wasn't a big screen <laughs> film, a lot of these classic black culture books from elementary school had a small corresponding movie. Uh Lillian says there's room to mistake a coping mechanism that appears to be a positive character trait right up front and come to understand it as toxic. Um, Lysia, I believe that says Lysia Ten said, as an empath, I used to be a people pleaser and That's used food and used food and sex sometimes at the same time. Not getting eating pizza with a back shot. That's my, that is my dream. Um, anyway, sometimes <laughs> at the same time, sometimes at the same time to cope with others' strong emotions. Y'all never thought about like, yo, oh man, I could get a back shot and eat pizza right at the same time. Oh, Nah, anyway, not, I can't focus on true. Never mind. Anyway, I listen, I I just feel like that'd be a really good time. That's all I'm, I'm saying. going anyway. to choke and not in the fun way. So audible, okay. well, that's, audible, yeah, that's audible, audible. What foods are acceptable during sex and what foods are not acceptable during I sex? Like is pizza acceptable? Very acceptable. One handed pizza thing is acceptable. I feel like pizza, pizza is acceptable. acceptable. That's a one handed thing. It's nice and soft and there's no bones. I was going to say wings because I love eating wings, but there's bones in there. You might If die. you go from eating some buffalo wings to working on somebody's, no, you know how hot that is? Hell no. <laughs> wings. First of all, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be buffalo. Thank you very much. But pizza, maybe French fries. Ooh, French fries would be good. Or All maybe right. like nuggets. Maybe like chicken tender. Like you know what I'm saying? Like maybe those mm -hmm. boneless, boneless wings. Sweeting sour sauce down some. Anyway, so I'm sorry. Boneless. I've just um, anyway, derailed that whole topic uh, with that. I was about to say full exposure, but you know the only thing that I've eaten while getting back shots is um. <laughs> so uh yeah anyway. Oh not. <laughs> 
He ain't as innocent as she as y'all thought she is now, is she? Um, Jamika said for me, I'd have to say that I'm continuously dang. Why is y'all writing when I'm reading? Okay, for me, I'd have to say that I'm continuously trying to prove myself to others. Not sure if it's a coping mechanism, but you know, shrugs. Uh, because to be to to be honest, I suffer from imposter syndrome. It said TBT, and I was like, throwback Thursday. Um, I suffer from imposter syndrome, and I'm scared of allowing myself to actually be myself. Understandable. Very Stop understandable. Be yourself. Stop um, it. Be yourself. Genocide Circus said, soup is not acceptable. Soup is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. It is very know. not acceptable. Oh, ice cream is acceptable. I like it. Yes, ice cream is. It might be acceptable. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Fruit. Ice cream. Syrup. Fruit. Fruit's a good one. Fruit. Fruit, yeah. fruit roll-up. Yeah. Um, Lisa said so, fruit is, is acceptable during sex. Yes. Um, just as I said, donuts on the, on the dick. Do you guys remember that game when you was kids or whatever like that? They would take the donut and string it up or whatever, and you would have to like try to eat the donut, like you know, the off the string. No. no. What? No. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No. I have creme brulee before. <laughs> Crimp. Oh wait a minute! Was that a, was that a joke? Was that a joke? <laughs> wait, oh, before as in before oh. Or... oh, girl, throw back Thursday. Um, yeah, <laughs> just like a, us talking about food is remembering the sex scene from Hot Shots. Damn, that was sexy. No, that's uh, don't be a menace to society while drinking juice in the hood. Oh, uh-huh. dear God. Uh, <laughs> the hot sauce, the hot sauce no. on the toes, though. Don't no, not the hot dog. That's the baby's lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Let me eat your house. I mean, no, your kids' lunch. Like, okay, before we get off this topic, just on a serious note, it is possible, and, and I guess it's a question I wanted to ask you guys. What what's your what's your next move? Yeah. If you fall in, if you fall in love with somebody with a coping me- that you know their coping mechanism if you find out that you know the person that you thought this person was mm-hmm. is this person no because um I, I think my my issue and particularly with that scene is she took it in and understood like they both in that scene they both had i don't know if you guys watched the scene that i sent you but they both had valid points in mm-hmm. The relationship she was like you lied to me about being able to come closer to home and he's like you literally have envisioned an older version of me that was about to off themselves had I not met you you know mm-hmm. kind of thing so it's like it's it's difficult because she still wanted to be right and just excuse me once again she still wanted to be right and just like you know in herself but it's kind of those things where you have to really step back and look at like what are you going to do now um yeah. spoiler alert they ain't together no more anyway but the the <laughs> point is it's just like what do you do with that because i think it would be hard if i fell in love with a coping me- mechanism i'm a type of person where i find little things that aren't that significant to a person the best thing that i love about them like the best thing about like somebody who does like a little fake little snort laugh when something's not like too funny but it's just a tiny bit funny but it just it just it makes them like do that a little bit or like just uh someone who does like a lot of side eyeing or whatever like it's just little stuff that just makes me giggle and i fall in love with those things so if i knew it was one of those like oh well i actually give you a side eye when we're joking about stuff because i don't know if you're being serious or not and i'm scared so i i try to make it funny to see if you're being serious like if that's i'm like um well Oh, uh, like I don't, I don't know how to move from that because now every time I see you side, I'm like, no, 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 I'm just joking. Like now it's, it's gonna make me scared to approach you a certain type of way because now I don't know how to feel about you anymore because what I loved is something that you were hurt, like it was hurting you. If that mm. makes sense. So yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know. It makes sense. What about you, Mr. Proper? Honestly, I'm not sure. I don't think I, I've I've become a lot more aware of uh of, of a lot of things so like you said if it's something that is that doing it to hurt themselves i'm not going to fall in love with it um i can't think i can't honestly can't think besides a i honestly can't think of anything i can't how think of anything you know? that would be that's the how question. would i know how would you know if this is something that's hurting them 
because usually with coping mechanisms, it's somebody like Chase said, masking who mm. they actually are. And, well, you know, you don't know if this is something that's hurting them or not, because this is how they portray themselves to people. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I see, and that's where I'm going to have to dip a little bit into my faith bucket and hope that we have developed a level of communication between each other where she would feel comfortable enough to tell me what she's feeling, how she's feeling. I, I pray, dear, hashtag dear, dear, dear future wife, <laughs> I hope that you will tell me what's going on so that I can either try to help or, you know, whatever I can in that situation. Because honestly, I don't know. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to know unless they told me. And sometimes it wouldn't happen until it's too late. And I hope that she would recognize that if it becomes a too late situation, it doesn't just hurt you. It hurts me, too, because you're a part of me. So, again, I'm I'm not sure how I would recognize it, but I can only put faith on it. I don't know if somebody... Sorry. No, I was just going to say that. Dang it, girl. I was just quickly, I was quickly going to just insert that what Trey was saying as like, I hope they would communicate that sometimes they don't know it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the problem. Like, I don't think in that scene he knew that he like that she was in love with this version of him so much that it basically made who he is now unattractive. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. and so I don't think it's going to be something that you can communicate, unfortunately, until it becomes an issue. That was, that was pretty much it. So speaking to somebody who is going through this currently, mm-hmm. okay. um, it is difficult. I will say that I'll say this much because it is essentially falling in love with somebody you love all over again. Mm-hmm. And it's constant communication because, you know, you don't realize that there were parts of you that were not healed. And if the both of you are going through trying to heal yourselves and then you recognize that there were things that you were doing to yourself, trying to make other people happy. Mm-hmm. And then you 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 figure out, OK, this is something that I need to stop. And then you start to change your behavior and then your partner sees, OK, well, you're not doing the same thing that you used to do. What's the problem? And there's a disconnect. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Trey, there has to be constant communication. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if there is, if you're not talking, if you're not talking and you're not getting through whatever disagreements that you guys are coming, you know, coming to, to, it is going to, it'll tear your relationship apart. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell it'll yeah. Completely tear it apart. So if you have your, like the ideal situation is that you get into a relationship and you guys are both healed. You guys are working on whatever trauma that you may have experienced, experienced in your life. And you're starting together at that point. That's ideal. But if you are in a relationship with somebody and you've been in it for a long time and you guys are deciding to heal at a point where you've been together for years and in my situation, Mm -hmm. I'm married. So Mm -hmm. you've been together for years and you say, okay, I'm going to heal. And then you're working on yourself separately. It can do stuff to your union. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just if you find yourself in that situation, communication is the best thing. And I mean, on both both sides not just yours not just theirs but making sure you're constantly talking i know chase you said it before doing check-in check-ins is a big deal very much so if you're not doing a check-in you're not ready to be in a relationship like you have to you have to be ready i mean that's how i got dumped in college and i woke up with swollen eyes because i just did a check-in because nothing something didn't feel right but um like you have you have you have to do that like you have to do that like you know like and unfortunately, my check in ended up with my ass getting dumped. Mm. <laughs> like that's and, and 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 that's what had to happen. You know, I I had to make the hard decision and ask the question that I was scared to ask because I felt like the answer was going to be something I didn't want to be want to didn't want to hear. Because okay. even even if even if the person had said nothing, I'm cool. I know you're lying, and that probably would have hurt. I mean, I don't know being dumped hurt a lot but I think that would even hurt like you know the same level of like I know you're lying and you're not telling me the truth for whatever reason I don't know you know so a partner can feel it they can feel that pull they can feel that we're not as close as we used to be I know that person hurt me the worst way you can by telling me the truth than me feeling that 
because nothing feels worse than you're telling me, I love you. Like, we're good. Baby, we're not. We're not. I know we're not. And I don't want you to also then gaslight me and be like, well, are you not good? Because if I said I'm good, then you, like, why are you saying we're not good? I can feel it, bro. We don't have to be a quote unquote, like, claimed, um, you know, empath. We don't have to be a, a reader of sorts. We don't have to have tarot cards. We don't have to have any of these extra yeah, things to have, like, yeah. these feelings. Like, you know, when, if I'm in tune with you, if we have been sexually in tune with each other, Mm -hmm. I can feel I can feel the difference in your heartbeat. So if if that is the case, therefore, I know that it's not. And as crazy as it sounds, Marcus and um, what's what is what is her name? Um, but she was dropping dude's name like damn. No, from, oh, um, from Angela, Angela and Marcus. As crazy as those two are, and like you know, why did I get married? And they're like you know the show what you call it, that they had with Taipei or whatever. As crazy as we all know those characters are from the movie, they know each other in depth. Like, you know, they 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 fight and stuff like that, but they know each other. Like, oh, you know, oh, Angela, oh, yes, you know, you know, Angela's crazy as hell. And... But yes, okay. but they know, yeah. like, they know, they know. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that's why before, um, you know, Jill Scott busted a head over that bald head man's head, you know, she was just like, I knew something was going on with you. That's why I, I got myself taken care of. They know. Like, <laughs> so it's just like, it's better for you just to tell the person what's going on and say, hey, can we chat for a little bit? Right. It's not more than sure it can get fixed with a small conversation than mm -hmm. blow up with a big conversation. It, it, it really annoys me. That's one thing that it could be possible that I'm not ready for a relationship because what aggravates was a pet peeve of mine is you're trusting me enough to put my dick in you, but you're not trusting me enough to communicate how you feel your internal feelings. You want to keep that secret, but you're going to spread it. You're going to pop it open for a real nigga. That's what you but want. How hard, which it's one easier, you it's way harder. easier it's to way let easier your body go than your feelings go. It's so yes, much it's I'm so not, much I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, what I'm not doing is putting a, a level of difficulty on either action. What right. I'm saying is I don't understand why right, that's what, that's what you can do to, one and not do another and that's what we I understand it's different level of under, understanding it is it's a mm. difficult thing like and and i know like you said i know that you're not questioning that part of it mm -hmm. but it's easier to bear your body than to bear your soul to somebody and it shouldn't be it, it shouldn't be and no I it, 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 I, will, I will tell you very quickly why to be emotionally naked takes a lot it does because if i if i show you a body part which it may have me or i'm not having to one or two members part of this podcast before it's not it's easy it's easy where is she she's over there there we go okay <laughs> i show my titties i don't care anyway it's they left me out of the loop easy, i ain't seen no titties yeah but it's easy to do that because to me it's skin it's mm -hmm. nothing to me. For me, it's nothing, right? So it, it's mm -hmm. like it is whatever, right? Or mm -hmm. and then or it like having sex with a person. It's just like once you get over that little awkward phase of like, hey, you're naked and I'm naked. All right, now we bumping fupas together. It's I'm basing my dissatisfaction off of you. Me personally, right. I'm basing your, my sex off of you. If you're having a good time, then I'm having a good time. Everything's great and and gander in the world, right? I don't have to think about me during a, a sex scene. I don't have to. I don't have to think about me. I just. I just have to think about: Am I throwing my ass back enough? Or no, am I giving enough throat? I'm just thinking about actions. I don't, I don't care about anything else that's going on. I'm not thinking about my emotions, or whatever. I'm just making sure that you get yours, I get mine. We're calling it a day. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my emotions, I have to be very realistic with myself. So it's not about the other person who I'm talking to. It's about me. I have to examine myself and it is very scary to really talk to yourself and really have a self-examination. You know, I mean, if you think about it, how many dudes are out there holding their dicks and coughing for themselves? Not a lot. How many women are actually doing self breast examinations like they're supposed to do in the shower, like every week or every two, six weeks or so? <laughs> Not a lot. 
because you're scared to find something. You're scared to feel something. If you have unprotected sex with a person or um, if you are about to be pregnant or like, you know, you didn't study that much or you failed a test, you're scared to see these results because you know they could be failure or a big surprise that you didn't want to happen to happen. It's the same thing with yourself. You are scared to find this stuff out about yourself. And to sit down and have a conversation from Candace to Grace, if you guys don't know that's my middle name, that's hard. If you want so, to tell her about it. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's one of I don't care. Everybody knows my name. So it's one of those things where it's harder to talk to yourself and then translate the conversation you had with yourself to another person. That's a whole different language. Right. Mm-hmm. So now that you've f- figured out self-language and to pass that feeling on to another, it's difficult. Hence why that's why a lot of people are scared to go to therapy mm-hmm. because they realize they're going to have to open up a whole world of themselves and themselves that they never had to face. And it's terrifying. So Shout yeah. Out to people who's actually gone out there yes, and done it. Very much you. so. So yeah, I can give you coochie like it's nobody's business because guess what? I don't got to talk to you to fuck. And that's, that's, you know, <laughs> like, what I, what I realized, yeah. what I realized during this conversation is that I, we're on, we, I'm on one side of the fence, you're on another side of the fence. So, um, what I'm saying is that something sex to me is as sacred as okay. letting somebody into my emotional space. And in, in a lot of ways for me, it's one and the same. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not giving up the physical without giving up the emotional. Mm-hmm. They're intertwined That's why I don't do one night stands, but I think we spent, we, yeah. We yeah, just gonna go yeah. into these comments. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had to go back to this one. Afisha Roy, you uh she said she said used to. She used creme brulee. I was cracking up with that. I actually took a second and looked on the side and was like, I need to find out if I can can I use creme brulee? Yeah, psh, get a little creme hand torch. Brulee. That's good. And go That's for good. hey, let's crack the top shit. with some sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the pun of the night, Lenny and Desu, creme brulee sounds lit. <laughs> I'm just I said no. It it was hot sauce. It was hot shots. Oh, oh, hot shots. And with with uh Tom, not Tom Cruise, the other white boy, uh Tiger's Blood. God, what the hell was his name? You don't remember his name? Mm-mm. He was he was on Two and a Half Men. And, oh, uh, oh, Charlie Charlie Sheen. Charlie, Charlie Sheen. Sheen. Yes, Sheen. hot shot. Oh, now it's coming back to me. That movie. Okay, I'm I'm really mad at all this talk about being. Being about bear one's soul and true feelings reminded me of an old book series from elementary school. Okay. All right. I guess drop a link. And Jamika F, it's a trauma response for some. It's a level of vulnerability that was given and either exploited or not reciprocated. So, I, and I get you. I, I, I understand, but I just think it, it's wrong to do so. But moving on. Last topic for tonight. All right. Uh, Higher relationship treatment. So many times we've talked about these situations where people are, you know, you get you a boyfriend and you only give me boyfriend level or sneaky link level or blah, 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 blah. Higher relationship. uh, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. Higher relationship treatment will be wife treatment, husband treatment, um, in my opinion. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. That's just pretty much it. Um, but uh, I guess that that wraps up that part. What do you guys think it looks like? In oh, they, oh, you went to your you went to your bed now. You gonna I stop back like a fool when it comes to <laughs> being, having a husband uh, vibes and wifey vibes. I don't I don't get the difference between the two. Like I don't like I, it's weird to me because like my ex, for example, all I did was. Like we was at Chipotle. Ooh, that burrito was fire. Anyway, we was at Chipotle and I went and I picked up his tray while I was done with my food and threw it away because, you know, that's what you kind of do. You throw away your food and you done with your food, man. We gonna throw it away. And he just said to me, he was just like, like, you really wifey type. And I'm like, what do you mean? It took me a week to squeeze that out of him. But he basically, he's like, without thought, you made sure like my stuff was clean. Like you just picked up after me. Like it was, it was a nice thought of you. Cause he's like, I've been out on dates where like, you know, we did a little fast food, whatever. And they, she just went through away her stuff and she didn't care about my stuff or whatever. And I'm like, I guess like, it was something that I, that's not, that wasn't um thought about. Like I just did it. Um, Somebody else has said something that I've done was like wifey type shit. And I'm like, I, I 
don't think I just think it's having manners, maybe just being considerate of the other person. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm confused of. I particularly heard it from a certain podcast from a person who was in a long term, a very long term relationship, and they recently just had a really big breakup. Um, and like she stated, I'm no longer doing wifey shit like for anyone. And I just want to know what is wifey shit and what is hubby shit. Like, what do you define as that? Because if you're saying like just helping here and there, if you need help with anything, whatever, that's just you being a nice person. So wh what does that, def what, what is husband and wifey stuff? And I think the only person who can say that is people who are married on this um, podcast. I disagree, um, but okay. Yeah, but like, I just don't, I don't know. No, I'm not saying that she's the only one. I'm just saying what. She's what was you, what was you the wifey shit. So here, here's the thing. Um, I couldn't hear. What did you say? I couldn't hear you. Your mic went out. Oh, my microphone. God dang. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Can yeah. you hear me now? Yes. Good. All right. <laughs> um, what did you do before you got married versus what you do now as you're married that would have defined wifey? So, wifey? Here's the thing. And I think me being wifey material is probably what got me what got me here anyway um it's basically just going the extra mile for somebody and when i say that it's like it could be whether you are you know just checking in on that person like you said chase just being considerate enough to take their tray with you you know cooking a meal and making sure they're making sure they're good making sure you know do you need anything you need to get you know you need help with cleaning up or getting back and forth to work or you know how can I help you in whatever type of way it's being a wife or being a spouse in general is being a helpmate you are supposed to give that little bit extra you know if your partner is falling behind or something and then vice versa like you guys are supposed to you're supposed to work to lift each other up that's what being a spouse is about. So mm -hmm. when it comes to being wifey material, it's just doing that little bit of extra to show that you are caring or nurturing and you really do care about, you know, this person that you're trying to be with. And um, honestly, I feel like when I was dating Hubducer, I was still doing the same thing. Like I was just being me, you know? And like you said, it's just, it was just me thinking I'm a nice person. But now that I'm older, Mm -hmm. I know that there's a difference in what I did, you know, versus what people actually consider to be like just girlfriend treatment, because you can give this wifey treatment to somebody who is undeserving of it. Excellent. And that's where I think the problem comes in. When you just like the person that you said Chase was on that podcast, she gave all of herself to this person who wasn't deserving of it. So given that wifey treatment means I'm going the extra mile to prove that I care about you, but you're not reciprocating that same action in, in return. So I'm going to dial it back. And mm -hmm. that's me, you know, just being me, taking care of me, making sure my shit is, you know, taken care of because we two grown ass adults. So you should be handling your business anyway. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I think the difference is when you are just, in a relationship but you just girlfriend and boyfriend you two individuals who are supposed to be taking care of your shit and it's not my responsibility to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing you know if you need something taken care of okay well you go ahead and you take care of that it's not me checking on you and saying okay do you need help with this do you need to do yada 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 it, there's a difference so i think that uh for the i agree with you in some cases uh but i think that in order to become a wife First off, first off, I fucking hate the term wifey or hubby or hus whatever the fuck. I just call it what the fuck it is. Your boyfriend, girlfriend, till you're fucking married. Yes, I'm going to sound like an old fuddy-duddy. I don't give a fuck. I ain't I'm not calling you my wifey. I'm not doing that shit. However, when it comes to terms of breaking it down of what it is, you have to show your value in order to get to the next level. To get that, you got to start giving that treatment. The lady who says she's not doing it anymore... That's stupid, in my opinion. Don't say you're not going to do it anymore. Just don't do it for that type of individual. When somebody shows they're no longer worthy of your treatment, you leave that individual alone. Don't just stop doing it, because now every dude that listens to that and hears that's like, oh, you're not going to do the shit I need you to do. Or I don't even know what it is that you're, that you're not willing to do anymore because you were vague on it, not intentionally, but you gave a vague statement of I'm not going to do it anymore. So 
I, I, now I don't even want to deal with that. Some people will literally disqualify you off some shit like that. Mm-hmm. That they're pe- humans are fickle creatures. But you have to perform certain duties. I can't. I can't come to you as a man trying to date you or in a relationship, whatever have you, and not do my duties. I can't. She's looking for reciprocity. That's fine. She can get it. She shouldn't have given given that service to the dude that was not giving it back. Um, but um, totally derailed my train of thought. You got to perform your duties. You need to show that you're capable of being a husband or a wife, in my opinion, to get to that level. Like like Royal said, she was doing things that made it so that he said, hey, I want to marry you. I'm not saying that's the only reason why he chose to marry her, but I'm saying he, she did perform certain things that made it so that she was valued in that way. So everybody, male and female, not turn into a battle thing. We all need to do our duties and show that we are worthy of getting to that next level. So yeah, that's how it looks to me. Yeah. But she said the same thing like Rose said. Like she's like, I'm just gonna keep everything very bare minimum, which I think And that's stupid to me. That's it, dumb. That's, <laughs> I don't think that's dumb. I, I think, think that after you've been in a relationship for let's just say seven years and there was talks, conversations, plans of being solely each other's person and like you know getting a house together and having these fundamental plans and you know pre-naming kids and whatever me have you and time invested with other friends and families and not even just them themselves it's like i became close with your parents you became close with my siblings like you know all this time that's been spent with this person um and then you know, you've been giving this treatment to this person because you're like, okay, well, maybe around like year four, year three or two or whatever, it's like you started giving more and understanding more and everything like that. And then you're mm. the more you're just spending with this person, okay, we're definitely doing this. We're we're having these continuous conversations. There's no one's confused. This is what's happening. And then something happens. I don't know if, if the person cheats. I don't know if you cheat. I don't know if like you both just need time away. Someone has a better job opportunity somewhere. Something happened. And, but obviously this term, something not the greatest happened because obviously you have some type of resentment. Um, But like, please let me tell you. When you go into, when you, when I finish, when you go into uh, the next relationship, you're going to make sure that your eyes are a little more open. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to, let me let me make sure. That's fair. Co- I don't got these rose colored glasses going on here because the last time everything was mm-hmm. gravy. We hit year seven and look at me now, you know. So it's always just being cautionary. Obviously, you don't want to take your baggage from the last relationship you had and bring it to that relationship and make everybody sorry about it. But you do want to make sure that you are aware and are taking your time into giving into this person so that way it doesn't feel like you're doing the same mistake all over again. I feel like that's the point. You're learning from your mistakes, you know? Okay. That's, and that's fair. I didn't say I disagree with any of that. What I'm saying is that, and what's going on in the comments right now, as far as not doing your wife, not, not wifely duties. I'm misspeaking there and not showing your value as a potential wife is is poor is a poor decision sorry if i'm triggering people it's a poor decision i'm sorry i'm sorry i was saying what do you think what do you think that value is how do you think she's supposed to show her value as so if we we get if we get down into the nitty-gritty of what values this will be here all night but every every hold up hold up every individual every individual has their own what they deem is valuable for them men and women, both sides. But if you're saying, I'm not, if you make a blanket statement like that, I'm not doing wifey stuff, period. I'm not doing it no more because of somebody in your past has done something to end that relationship. First off, you were in that relationship with that person for way too fucking long, and it didn't turn into, he didn't have no intention of marrying you in the first place, like for that particular lady in particular. Seven years is a little bit too long for me. But if you've been putting in your effort and you've been doing what you need to do, hold up, hold up. You've been putting the effort, doing what you need to do, doing your wifely do or wifey stuff at that level, giving the wifey treatment. And this person did not rec- reciprocate. Leave him the fuck alone. Mm-hmm. The next individual should not this. We've talked about this before. The next person should not be punished because somebody else in the past did something fucked up to you. Take yeah. your time to heal. 
Take your time to heal, get things together. And when somebody shows their value to you, you can start showing it to them. And when you're in the dating process, you can start growing together and showing your value. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you, I just went on a date with this dude and, or a lady just going to date with me and she should be showing me everything she's capable of right up front because I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, don't make blanket statements like that. And because you're going to cut off your nose to slice your face, Joe, you're not going to help yourself. I think the reason I actually made this statement like that is because it is a it is a form of protecting yourself. And I'm not saying that she may not, she may find somebody that's worthy of the treatment, but I'm not going into this relationship thinking that I'm going to be playing this mothering, nurturing role for you. And I'm not getting anything in return you know what i'm saying like that's what that's what the problem is and i think a lot of people confuse wifely duties mm-hmm. with that whole nurturing aspect of mm-hmm. a mother you know what i mean I didn't, like we're supposed we didn't to say anything about nurturing we just said she just said she was not doing wifely yeah, stuff when you talk about wifely duties wifely they're talking about nurturing. that nurturing part of you like that thing that mm-hmm. wants to make you go an extra mile to make sure the person that you're with is taken care of that's the nurturing part mm-hmm. of a woman and that's the part that we give to to, to our partners when we want to make sure that they're good and it could be something mm-hmm. as small as let me grab your tray and let me take it for you you yeah. know, so make sure that you're okay how can i help you you know what I'm saying? That's that nurturing part of us. And if we get shitted on when we give that part to somebody, leave them the fuck alone. You want to, exactly, but that's what I'm saying. It makes you want to protect that part of you. So that's why you make statements like, "I'm not doing this for nobody else." Until you get to the point where you are with somebody where y'all got the same type of values. He's, you know, what I'm saying, doing what he's supposed to be doing and handling his business, and you're doing the same. You mm-hmm. see those good qualities in him, then that's when you can let go of that nurturing side of you to maybe want to do a little, little extra. You know, what I'm saying when he's when he's proving that he may be somebody worthy of that. That's what I think she's saying. I'm not doing this for nobody else because she wants to protect herself. So when talking about um, the value of a potential husband, like Trey said, it's based off of your own perspective of what you would want to see in a person. And like Jimmy can say, but if a partner's not giving back, then why exhaust her efforts? And this is when we say, then leave. If like, you know, if I'm, if I'm asking you, please just, effort if i could have effort Mm -hmm. if i have to completely ask you over and over again for effort into the relationship then then there's no relationship that i'm just i agree on on myself so then when we're talking about like you know it's, it's, it's not punishment because it's not a person's right you don't have a right to another person's time and labor and affection it's not punishment if you're not being um deprived so if you were a person that if you're hold on because you're talking about Lillian Desu's comment on YouTube and I wanted to respond back to it. I'm sorry to cut you off. I got to jump in here because we only got like two minutes left. But I'm I'm saying you you are going to punish somebody in the future. You're making that person with you're withholding from that person. I'm not saying you owe that person anything. I'm not saying that you have to give that person your, your that part of yourself. I've specifically said when that person own, earns earns your trust, earns your loyalty, earns your wifey duties, whatever the fuck you want to call it. When they earn it, then you can start doing that. But don't sit there and make a blank. In my opinion, just talking from my, talking, shooting from the hip on my side. Don't make blanket statements like that, ladies, because you're going to turn dudes away from you. They're going to look at you and be like, oh, she ain't doing that shit. I don't want to deal with her. Why I got it? Why would I pick you if you already saying I'm still I'm you're waving your flag in the air saying I'm still hurt from my past relationship. So I ain't doing none of that shit for none of you niggas. That's it's how we hear it. That's how it's perceived that whatsoever. It's literally just putting it out there. I'm saying don't. Someone, <laughs> I'm saying don't put it out someone there. who says that we have to vet and someone who says we have to put our precedents and we have to put our 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 things out there that says this is what we're doing, this is what we will accept, this is what we will not accept. I'm putting that out there from jump gate. This is something I will accept. This is something that I will not accept. If you're not mm-hmm. able to handle that, then then you're not a person that I need to be speaking to. You're not a person that I need to be engaging with. Because if we're not, if you're not going to take heed to what I'm putting out there, then you need not to deal with me. But we can talk about that in the Discord. In the Discord. Um, first, please join the uh, <laughs> please uh, Discord. I just put the link uh, in, in the Discord. comment section. So if you are not joined to our Discord, please click like that and join our Discord. We would really appreciate it. It'd be jumping and pumping all 
day long, and we take Titty Tuesdays very, very seriously there. Uh, you yeah, can follow me on TikTok <laughs> at Chase H C H A Y E S I N C. You can also follow me on Instagram at Candy Taste Sweet. Um, I have a plethora of different shows and everything. If you don't know by now, then look at my schedule. I don't know what to say. Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, Saturdays at 8 p.m., Black Girls React. Sundays 1 to 3 on the radio at Spark FM. And you guys already know I'm always here every Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. It's the same time with your proper and royal on the Keep It Up podcast. Yeah, you guys can find me on social media uh, as Royal Rain, R O Y 4 L R 4 Y N E, on IG and Twitter. And you can find me on TikTok at Royal underscore KP. It's your boy Trey Proper everywhere. Get the damn Discord. Like the video on your way out. We'll see you over there. Peace. Bye, guys. Please like the video. <laughs> Do you want to do